It all starts with the vision, the project, the product, the service. No one has done it before. Unbelievable, it's so painfully obvious. Can you pull it off? Maybe. You're two friends, you are excited. Design a logo, design a name. All fun and games. Design the concept. Things get serious. You decide to make this a company. You need a structure. A legal structure. How much will that cost you? In the US, incorporating a company will set you back anything between $25 and a few thousand dollars. That's in part registration fees, which largely vary depending on where you are, and legal fees, which vary depending on how fancy you need your first shareholders agreement to be. Your incorporation turns out to be on the pricey side. Also, you need to rent a server in order to develop your product. Therefore, you decide to collect some other people's money for it. This early in your venture, who on earth would give you their money? You will get it from family, friends or by crowdsourcing it. Usually, a newly incorporated company issues 100,000 shares, which are equal pieces of ownership. You need to decide who will get how many of those. You agree on 40,000 shares or 40% of the company for each founder and 20,000 shares or 20% of the company for a well-off family friend who buys them for $50,000. It's called an investment. And at such an early stage in your startup, it's called a seed investment. The money he pays now belongs to the company. If the company fails in the near future, which statistically speaking is the most likely scenario, you will probably never see a dime of it again. $50,000 for 20% of the company puts the value of your enterprise at $250,000, which puts the value of your 40% at $100,000. Not bad. Please sign here, here and here. Congratulations, you incorporated your company and finished your seed round of investment. A year has passed. You're having a successful beta trial with customers. Time to hire a few more people. Rent not just a server but a small office space. The $50,000 of seed capital only got you so far. Time to collect your first big round of cash. You will do this in a so-called Series A round. You're looking for an investment of $1 million. This time you're contacting angel investors and venture capitalists, also called VCs. VCs are people who work for venture capital firms, which raise venture capital funds. They take other people's money, which they then invest into young, risky companies, such as yours. Angel investors are individuals who professionally invest their own money into young companies. Often they successfully sold their own startup many years ago and are now looking to support early ventures. You contacted a few few VCs and angels. Some of them you found online, some you got in touch with via friends and colleagues. You sent them mails, you sent them a business plan. Usually they don't care much for the business plan. They want to see the team, is it competent, the idea, is it special. They know it's not easy. What have you already achieved? Is it promising? What could you achieve? Can you dream big? You set up some Skype calls, a bit of small talk, a lot of business talk. Describe the vision, easy, you've done it countless times by now. They ask you tough questions. Have you heard of that other startup which does a similar thing? How are you different? You spark interest. You have second calls, you have third calls. You meet them in person. They might invest. Time to talk valuation. There is pre-money valuation and post-money valuation. The pre-money valuation of your startup is how you currently value it. The post-money valuation is the pre-money valuation plus the investment you're looking to collect. This this is usually the one that you reference when you negotiate, because the investment divided by the post-money valuation equals to the investor's share in your startup. Investors want a low post-money valuation to get more for their money. You want a high post-money valuation to keep a larger share. You suggest a post-money valuation of $8 million. For the investor who would put in $1 million, this would mean a 12.5% stake in your company. A few weeks down the road, there are two offers on the table. One VC offers an investment of $1 million for a post-money valuation of $6 million. An angel investor you talk to offers to invest $500,000 for a $5 million post-money valuation. The offer of the venture capitalist sounds like the better deal, but the angel has great connections in the industry. It's called smart money. What do you do? You decide to go for both. You tell the angel that you have a standing offer of $6 million post-money valuation, but you would really love to have her on board. She agrees to invest at a $6 million post-money valuation. Evaluation. Great. How's the cake split this time? Let's do the math. Together, the VC and the angel will put in a total of $1.5 million into your business for a $6 million post-money valuation. This means that they will own 25% of the company. You, your co-founder and your family friend used to own 
percent together. With the new investors coming on board, you will be diluted. After the Series A investment, your cumulative share will only add up to 75% of the company. This dilution happens proportionally. Does this mean that you have fewer shares now? No, here's how it works. Just like your company issued the first 100,000 shares when you incorporated it, it will now issue more shares for the new investors to buy. A company can create shares just like a central bank can print money. The total number of shares of the company just changes, while your number of shares remains the same. How many shares does the company issue? If 100,000 shares are now only 75% of the company, it means that 100% of the company will now be equivalent to 133,000 shares. Therefore, the investors receive 33,000 newly issued shares for their investment. Since they pay $1.5 million for their shares, each share is now valued at $45. Your 40,000 shares are now worth over $1.8 million. Congrats! This whole process of a company issuing new shares to receive cash is called a capital raise. If things go well, the Series A won't be the last capital raise of your startup. There will be a Series B, a Series C, a Series D and so on. For each investment round, the company valuation will hopefully increase. Also, each time your company takes a new cash from investors, you will be further diluted. Remember how I said that your number of shares remains the same though? I lied. Actually, there will usually be stock splits along the way, which convert each single share anyone holds into multiple shares. Hence, your number of shares is doubled or tripled every now and then, along with everyone else's. The purpose of this and many other things that are determined in the term sheet are a story for next time. You don't care much for legal work anyway. Your primary interest is in growing your business, which is now on track to reach new heights. It has been six years since you founded your company. You have successfully completed four investment rounds since then. You launched your product by now. Guess what? Customers love it. You're a huge success. The big blogs write about you and whatnot. Most importantly, last quarter, your company has not been losing money for the first time. The business made a profit. Time for the exit. Exiting the company is investors talk for selling their shares. Everyone who invested cash into your business since the beginning has been quietly dreaming about a big profit. The earlier they invested, the bigger of a risk they took and accordingly, the bigger of a profit they will get if the company really takes off. There are usually two ways of exiting a company, selling to one of the big guys or offering it on the stock market. If you sell out to a big company, the investors will usually sell all their shares at once. You and your co-workers, on the other hand, usually won't. Whoever buys you needs you people to stay motivated to run the whole thing. Therefore,